शौनक उवाचा अश्वथाम नो परशिष्टे न ब्राह्मशिष्ट नो रुचे जसा उत्तराया तो गर्भा ईशे ना जीविता पुना शौनक उवाचा अश्वथाम नो परशिष्टे न ब्राह्मशिष्ट नो रुचे जसा उत्तरायातो गर्भा ईशेना जीविता पुना एवरीवन चैप प्लीज हरे कृष्णा श्री शौना कावाच अश्वत्थामनो पश्चेते न ब्रह्मशिष्णोर रूतेजसा उत्तरायातो गर्भा ईशेना जीविता पुना Shanaka Uvacha Ashvatam No Parishtena Brahma Seer Shonaru Tejasa Uttaraya Hato Garba Ishenji Vatapuna Hare Krishna Sonaka Uvacha अस्वाथाम न पश्चिष्ठे न ब्रह्मणा सिरसनो रुद्रे तेजसा उत्तराया हतु गर्भा इसे न जीविता पुना हा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा सौनका उवाच अस्वस्थाम न पश्चिष्ठे न ब्रह्मा शिष्णो रुद्रे जसा उत्तराया हतो गर्भ ईशो ना जीविता हा पुना हा हरे कृष्णा शौनक वाचा अश्वत्थाम नो पश्चेष्टेना ब्रह्म 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 शिष्णो तेजसा उत्तराया हतो गर्भा ईशे ने जीविता पुना Shaunaka vacha ashvathamo ashvathamano pasreshthena brahma shirshano shishnaru tejasa uttaraya hato garbha isha na jivita puna. Shaunaka vacha Aswatham no parstrena Brahma sirsho sirsno rutejasa Uttaraya hato garbha Ise nanjivita punaha Anyone else? Very good, thank you. Word for word translation. Shonaka uvacha the sage Shonaka said, Ashwatamna of Ashwatama, the son of Drona, Upasrishtena, by release of, Brahmasirshna, the invincible weapon, Brahmastra, Urutejasa, by high temperature, Uttaraya, of Uttara, mother of Parikshit, Hata, being spoiled, garbha, womb, ishena, by the Supreme Lord, ajivita, brought to life, puna, again. Translation. The sage Shonaka said, the womb of Uttara, mother of Maharaj Parikshit, was spoiled by the dreadful and invincible Brahmastra weapon released by Ashratama. But Maharaj Parikshit was saved by the Supreme Lord. Purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. The sages assembled in the forest of Naima Sharanya inquired from Sutta Goswami about the birth of Maharaj Parikshit. But in the course of the narration, other topics, like the release of the Brahmastra by the son of Jonah, his punishment by Arjuna, Queen Kunti Devi's prayers, the Pandava's visit to the place where Bhishma Dev was lying, his prayers, and thereafter the Lord's departure for Dwaraka were discussed. 
his arrival at Dwaraka and residing with the 16,000 queens, etc., were narrated. The sages were absorbed in hearing such descriptions, but now they wanted to turn to the original topic. And thus the inquiry was made by Shonagarishi. So the subject of the release of the Brahmastra weapon by Ashwatthama is renewed. And we're doing two verses today. I'll just read through uh, text two. Tasya janma maha bude karmani cha mahatmanaha nidanam cha How is the great emperor Pariksit, who was highly intelligent and a great devotee born in that womb? How did his death take place? And what did he achieve after his death? Purport of Hastinapur, now Delhi, used to be the emperor of the world, at least till the time of the son of Emperor Pariksit. Maharaj Pariksit was saved by the Lord in the womb of his mother, so he could certainly be saved from an untimely death due to the ill will of the son of a Brahmana. Because the age of Kali began to act just after the assumption of power by Maharaj Pariksit, the first sign of misgivings was exhibited in the cursing of such a greatly intelligent and devoted king as Maharaj Pariksit. The king is the protector of the helpless citizens and their welfare, peace and prosperity depend on him. Unfortunately, by the instigation of the fallen age of Kali, an unfortunate Brahmana's son was employed to condemn the innocent Maharaj Pariksit. And so the king had to prepare himself for death within seven days. Maharaj Pariksit is especially famous as one who is protected by Vishnu. And when he was unduly cursed by a Brahmana's son, he could have invoked the mercy of the Lord to save him. But he did not want to because he was a pure devotee. A pure devotee never asks the Lord for any undue favor. Maharaj Pariksit knew that the curse of the Brahmana's son upon him was unjustified, as everyone else knew. But he did not want to counteract it because he knew also that the age of Kali had begun and that the first symptoms of the age, namely degradation of the highly talented Brahmana community, had also begun. He did not want to interfere with the current of the time, but he prepared himself to meet death very cheerfully and very properly. Being fortunate, he got at least seven days to prepare himself to meet death. And so he properly utilized the time in the association of Shukadeva Goswami, the great saint and devotee of the Lord. And text one again. Shonaku uvacha ashratam no pasrishtena brahmasirshno rutejasa uttaraya hata garba ishena jivitak puna. The sage Shonaka said, the womb of Uttara mother of Maharaj Pariksit, was spoiled by the dreadful and invincible Brahmastra weapon released by Ashwatthama. But Maharaj Pariksit was saved by the Supreme Lord. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurani Pacharine Nirvashe Shishanivati Pastata Deshatarine this is a very exciting to be starting a new chapter about Maharaj Pariksit. Actually, one, one third of the entire uh, first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam is actually devoted to the protection and birth and life and pastimes of Maharaj Pariksit. So it's a significant part of this first canto and a significant part of understanding Srimad Bhagavatam and understanding and hearing the whole uh, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is my thesis statement for today's class is that Maharaj Pariksit is amazing. That's my thesis statement for today. Maharaj Pariksit is so amazing. And one thing I actually found it a little bit humorous that Prabhupada explains in the purport that Actually, the sages long ago already asked uh, Sutta Goswami, tell us about Maharaj Pariksit. And he went in and Prabhupada, let's see, where is it? 
the sages in the forest inquired from Sutta Goswami about the birth of Maharaj Parikshit. But in the course of the narration, other topics like the release of the Brahmastra by John, his punishment, Queen Kunti's prayers, passing of Bishvadeva, all these other things. And now finally, after healing, hearing all of that, Prabhupada said the sages were deeply absorbed in all those narrations. But now, now they're sort of reminding Sutta Goswami. Remember way back, you know, uh, eight chapters ago, we asked you about Maharaj Parikshit. How about, let's get back to that now after hearing all these other wonderful things. So I thought that was cute and even a little bit funny how the sages were reminding Sutta. We asked you about Sutta, we asked you about Parikshit. So let's get back to it. This is back in the fourth chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. There's actually several, over the course of several verses, they glorify Parikshit and say, tell us about him. But in text nine specifically, they say, Abhimanyu Sutam Sutta. Actually, in today's verses, you also Abhiman Sutta, or no, Uta, uh, Abhiman Sutta. No, he's not in today's verse. But Abhimanyu Sutam Sutta, Prahur Bhagavatotamam, Tasya Janma Mahascharyam Karmani Cha Grinihitna. It is said that Maharaj Pariksit is a great first class devotee of the Lord and that his birth and activities are all wonderful. Please tell us all about him. So this is way back in the fourth chapter, eight chapters ago, they asked about him. And um, Sutta Goswami started telling about the uh, Vyasadeva's dejection and his meeting with Narada and how he was preached to by Narada Muni and uh, the life of Narada and the prayers of Queen Kunti and Krishna leaving Hastinapur and the, the death scene, the very emotional and very instructive death scene of Bishmadev, all these things. And then after eight chapters of that, although they were relishing all, this, all those discussions, certainly, but now the time had come. Remember, we asked about Maharaj Pariksit, please tell us about him. Because hearing about Maharaj Pariksit and understanding Maharaj Pariksit is so important. He's Mahascharya. Uh, that word is used. Mahascharya means amazing. Ascharya means amazing. And Mahascharya means he's so amazing. Everything about him is amazing. Prabhupada explains actually in that, in that purport in the fourth canto, he says, the birth of Maharaj Pariksit is wonderful because in the womb of his mother, he was protected by the personality of God at Sri Krishna. His activities are also wonderful because he chastised Kali, who was attempting to kill a cow. His death is also wonderful because he got previous notice of his death, which is wonderful for any mortal being. And thus he prepared himself for passing away by sitting down on the bank of the Ganges and hearing the transcendental activities of the Lord. So every phase of his life is wonderful, Mahascharya, amazing that his birth is amazing. His life and activities are all amazing and his death is amazing. So uh, how special is he? Um, now we may remember last week we were, we were discussing in uh, the description of Krishna and his queens and how interjected in that, there was another discussion, another verse we discussed about Krishna coming and his activities in the material world uh, to kill the demons. And we were discussing how these things are not contradictory, but they're all tied together to give us the same message about understanding and appreciating the transcendental nature of Krishna. So when the sages asked Sutta Goswami, tell us about Maharaj Parikshit, and Sutta started describing all these other things about Vyasadeva and Narada and Kunti and Krishna's travels and Bhishma Dev, uh, we could understand, look at that in the same way. That this is all those interim discussions, although they seemed different than the, talk, the topic of Maharaj Parikshit, those things actually are preparing us, helping us to understand Mahascharya, how amazing and how wonderful is the life of Maharaj Parikshit. And also Prabhupada also explained that the activities in the pastimes described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, although they're 
Purana, Bhagavat Purana, their history, but they're not like an academic history of today. They're not necessarily presented in chronological order. They may be uh, some what is called non-linear storytelling. There may be jumping around and even pastimes may not all be in the same uh, cycle of creation even, but it's just, but it's uh, presented like that for a variety of reasons, for literary really reasons and spiritual reasons, even literarily speaking on uh, this non-linear storytelling is an important tool of, you know, great writers in history, uh, Emily Bronte, James Joyce, Kurt Vonnegut Jr., all great authors who use this nonlinear jumping around. Or if you go see a movie and a movie has a flashback, that's a nonlinear storytelling and it's to uh, actually help you understand better the whole context of the whole story. So the Bhagavatam also does that. And we can look at it that way. <clears throat> uh, Sutta Goswami is explaining Vyasadeva's dissatisfaction that he presented all of the Vedic literatures and he was not satisfied. And he was only fully satisfied when Narada came to preach to him and explained to him, you have to directly glorify the qualities and personalities of Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna himself. Otherwise you won't be satisfied. That's to help us understand the power and the potency and the, the authority of Srimad Bhagavatam. And that Srimad Bhagavatam is the gift of Parikshit Maharaj. So we can understand like that, it's preparing us to appreciate the life and the passing away of Maharaj Pariksit. Uh, what else? Uh, Queen Kunti's prayers. Queen Kunti is praying, let these calamities come again and again. So we were hearing in, uh, today, in today's purport, Prabhupada is explaining that although Pariksit Maharaj is Vishnu Rata, he's protected by Krishna himself directly protected by him in the womb from the uh, weapon of Ashwatthama. But still, when the time came when he was cursed by the corrupt uh, Brahmana boy, Shringi, then he also accepted, uh, let this calamity come, just like Queen Kunti's prayers. So that's Queen Kunti's prayers is to help us understand this mentality, which enables, uh, enables us to understand and appreciate the life of Maharaj Pariksit. And uh, Queen Kunti was speaking about herself, but the suffering of the curse of Maharaj Pariksit was so amazing and so worthy, worthy of being accepted because it gave the whole world Srimad Bhagavatam. So how important is it? Uh, Krishna leaving Hastinapur and arriving in Dwaraka, how do devotees are uh, being without Krishna and feeling separation from Krishna and appeasing that separation by hankering for Krishna and hearing about Krishna. This is also the position of Maharaj Pariksit. He appeared, although he's so close to Krishna, Krishna came and protected him. Actually, his name Pariksit, Pariksit, Pariksha in Sanskrit, I think maybe in Hindi also, means to examine or to test. So Maharaj Pariksit, as an embryo in the womb, saw Krishna there personally coming to protect him from the Brahmastra of Ashwatthama. And his whole life after that, he was looking and examining, where is Krishna? Where is that person who protected me? Therefore, his name is Parikshit. He was always examining, where is that person? Where is that person who's uh, examining? Who's, uh, where is that person who came to protect me? So he's Parikshit. He was constantly looking for Krishna, waiting for Krishna, expecting Krishna. When is Krishna coming? Just like the residents of Dwarka are waiting and expecting and hearing Krishna's conch shell blowing. And oh, Krishna's coming. So Parikshit Maharaj is just like that. And therefore he's named Parikshit. Um, so all of these previous eight chapters, which seemed like a detour, in one sense a detour, talking about all different things. And that's also acceptable that you can detour and talk about different things. Prabhupada, when he would give class, he would often uh, speak and range over a sort of uh, almost a stream of consciousness way, jumping from topic to topic. But it was all uh, in the service of the point of the verse and in the point of preaching Krishna consciousness. So all these other topics about, oh, what to speak of the passing, the one I forgot, the passing of Bhishma Dev. 
showing a devo- how a devotee dies with a fixed mind, with a peaceful mind, uh, but still fixed on Krishna, still devoted to Krishna. This also helps us understand the life of Pariksit Maharaj. So all of these things, all these so-called digressions, they're not really digressions. They're actually specifically to the point of that original question of the sages. Tell us about Pariksit Maharaj. His birth is wonderful. His life is wonderful. And his death is wonderful. So again, his birth is wonderful because he's Vishnu Rata. Krishna personally came to protect him in the womb. Um, his life is wonderful. Prabhupada talks about how he, how Kali came, the personality of Kali came. Actually, in different places, Prabhupada describes different things and different incidents as the instigation or the first appearance of the age of Kali. Here he's describing that Parikshit being cursed by the son of Shamak Rishi. That was the first entrance of Kali into uh, the kingdom, that the Brahmanas became degraded. Uh, there's also, it's also described that the appearance of the personality of Kali himself in the kingdom of Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit, he was touring the kingdom and he saw a cow being beaten, a bull being beaten by a, a low class man, low cla- obviously low class, although in the dress of a king, beating and harassing a poor defenseless bull. And that's also described, this is the entrance of the age of Kali. Elsewhere, it's said that the, uh, the cheating fighting techniques used by both sides actually in the uh, battle of Kurukshetra was also the first entrance of the age of Kali. And then other places, it says that that that's not coming for a little while now, the actual disappearance of Krishna when he left this world. Krishna Swadamu Pagate, when Krishna left this world and returned to his abode of Goloka Vrindavan, that that was the instigation of Kali Yuga. But in any case, Maharaj Parikshit, his life and his activities as a king were so amazing that he was actually able to hold off and delay the entrance of Kali Yuga. That's an amazing thing, that the potency of someone who could withhold the progression of the Yugas, that's almost literally, it's like holding back the the rising of the sun or holding back the cycle of the moon. Because just as the rising and setting of the sun, the cycle of the moon, these are all natural cycles that the world goes through, the universe goes through. Uh, so the progression of the yugas in the same way as a natural progression that the creation goes through and holding it back. What sort of amazing potency and amazing ability does a person have to hold off the progression of the advancement of Kali Yuga? Uh, so, and his kingdom, his kingdom was so amazing. Uh, defeating Kali, uh, Ruling the kingdom is in such an amazing way that Pariksit is most famous as a king for being the just king, the perfect king, and all of the citizens are happy. This is a verse, actually, this is from the Atarva Veda. Tonight in the Ishapanishad class, we'll hear about the different Vedas. Uh, but the Atarva Veda also contains glorification of Pariksit. It said, this in language is a little flowery because a lot of the translations of the Vedas are older and uh, sort of flowery in Old English. But this is in the Atarva Veda. O singer, bring thou forth the hymn that brings abundant cows and brings abundant wealth. Just as an archer aims his shaft, address this prayer unto all the gods. Listen to Parikshit's eulogy the sovereign whom all people love, the king who rules over all, surpassing all mortals as though he were a god himself. Mounting his throne, Parikshit, the greatest of all kings, has given us peace and comfort. As if leaping up to reach the light of heaven, the grain in the fields rises above the furrow. Happily thrive the people in the land where King Parikshit reigns. Here cows increase and multiply, Horses increase and men prosper. Here with a thousand rich rewards doth 
Pushan, Krishna, the nourisher of all, also seat himself. O oh God, let these cows be safe, their master, Parikshit, free from injury. Let not the hostile hearted order robber have control of them. Often and again and again, we glorify the hero Parikshit with our hymn of praise and with our prayers. Take pleasure in the songs we sing. Let evil never fall upon us. So this is Parikshit Maharaj's life, his birth. We heard about his birth is amazing. And this is his life, such a king, like, although it was just before Kali Yuga, he was as great as any Vedic king from past ages and holding off the, uh, the illnesses and the diseases and the degradation of the age of Kali personally, single-handedly holding off that advancement. And his death, what to speak of all of that? His death is Mahascharya, the most amazing. Uh, he was wandering in the forest one time, hunting or whatever kings do in the forest. And he was feeling a little hot and thirsty. And he happened upon the ashram of the great sage uh, Shamak Rishi. Shamak Rishi was deep in meditation. So the king approached him and offered respect and asked for, asked for some water because he was very hot from wandering in the forest. Shamak Rishi didn't respond because he was completely absorbed in meditation and had no external consciousness at all. So Parikshit Maharaj, whether due to circumstances or due to the will of the Lord for his pastimes, Shamak Rishi, I'm sorry, Parikshit Maharaj became a little upset and in anger at the king, he found a dead snake picked it up with the end of his bow and draped it around the neck of Shamak Rishi, the, the meditating sage. When Shamak Rishi woke up and realized what had happened, he was not at all disturbed by what Parikshit Maharaj had done because he understood the greatness of Parikshit Maharaj. And in fact, he felt bad that he had not properly received the king. But his son, Shringi, who was also a Brahmin by birth and had some training, and had some brahmatejas, some brahminical ability, but he was not mature. And because of the influence of Kali Yuga, he became angry at the great devotee Parikshit Maharaj and cursed him that within seven days, you will be bitten by the snake Takshika, and this king will die for insulting my father, the great Brahmana. And his father was uh, devastated by the curse of his son, and everyone was devastated by that. But Parikshit Maharaj said, what can be done? I did something wrong. Actually, just a moment after Parikshit Maharaj draped the, the snake around the neck of the sage, just as he was walking away, he already had started uh, this process of introspection and criticizing himself. That was not very good what I've done. I shouldn't have done that. So when the curse came, he accepted it. He didn't try to fight. It. Parikshit Maharaj is specifically known by the name Vishnu Rata, one who is protected by Lord Vishnu because he was protected in the womb. But when this happened, as Prabhupada explained in the purport, he didn't ask for protection. He completely accepted it. He accepted it because he felt he deserved it for insulting the great sage. And because also understanding that this is part of the greater plan of the Lord that I've held off Kali Yuga for so long, but no one can permanently obstruct the uh, rising and setting of the sun, the cycles of the moon, or the progression of the yugas. It's part of Krishna's will for the advancement of Kali Yuga. And also, in a more directly spiritual purpose, part of Krishna's will for presenting Srimad Bhagavatam to the world. So by his death, his, ex his personal example was amazing. As at least as amazing as the passing away of Bhishma Dev, giving us the example of how to accept the will of the Lord and die in Krishna consciousness. But also by that death, he was so surrendered that Shukadev Goswami came and spoke Srimad Bhagavatam to him. And because of that, we have Bhagavatam today. And Bhagavatam is the topmost scripture, the topmost authority for all of us. Um, Parikshit Maharaj prayed, let's see, 
Uh, yeah, when he received the curse, as great a king as he was, Pariksit Raj, the greatest king, but he is also the greatest renouncer of a kingdom. The greater you are and the greater your situation is and the more opulence and power and influence you have, generally speaking, the harder it is to renounce that. But Pariksit Raj had the topmost position and the topmost power and potency and he utilized it all for the service of Krishna and for the protection of his citizens but when the time came he gave it up boom like that yes this curse came i immediately renounce it all so he was the perfect engager of facilities and position in krishna's service and he was the greatest renouncer of everything for krishna's service so again how amazing is parikshit maharaj his birth is amazing. His life is amazing. And his death is amazing. When the curse came, he said, Tamopayatam pratyantu vipra ganga chedevi dritta dritta mishe dvijo pashishta kuhakas takshakov takshakova dashatvalam gayata vishnugata. O Brahmanas, he said to all the sages who had assembled there for his death, he said, oh, Brahmanas, just accept me as a completely surrendered soul and let Mother Ganges, the representative of the representative of the Lord, accept me in that way. For I have already taken the lotus feet of the Lord into my heart. Let the snake bird or whatever magical thing the Brahman had created bite me at once. I only desire that you all continue singing the deeds of Lord Vishnu. So his death is amazing. He gave us. We have Parikshit Maharaj to thank for Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srimad Bhagavatam, the most essential thing, we'll also hear about a little bit about that in tonight's Ishopanishad class. Srila Sanatan Goswami glorifies Srimad Bhagavatam in his Krishna Leela Stava. He writes, O Srimad Bhagavatam, O nectar churned from the ocean of all the Vedic scriptures, O most prominent transcendental jewel of all the Vedas, O oh, you who, who are enriched with the jewels of all spiritual philosophical conclusions. O oh, you who grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world. O oh, life breath of the Vaishnava devotees. O oh, Lord, you are the sun which has arisen to, to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually Krishna himself who has returned among us. O oh, Srimad Bhagavatam, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. By reading you, one attains transcendental bliss, for your syllables rain pure love of God upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone, for you are an incarnation of Krishna. O oh, Srimad Bhagavatam, my only friend, my companion, my teacher, my great wealth, my deliverer, my good fortune, my bliss, I offer respectful obeisances unto you. O Srimad Bhagavatam, O giver of saintliness to the unsaintly, O uplifter of the very fallen, please do not ever leave me. Please become manifested upon my heart and my throat, accompanied by pure love of Krishna. This is the gift of Parikshit Maharaj, that we have it because of him. Uh, so now we can understand, this should help us understand why the sages long ago, Eight chapters ago, they asked Sutta Goswami, please tell us about this amazing Parikshit Maharaj. And he uh, went through all these other very relevant and very nectarian and very instructive in their own right descriptions of Queen Kunti and Vyasadeva and Bhishmadeva and Krishna's arrival in Dwaraka. We've been reading this over the past weeks and we know how nectar all of those discussions were. But now the sages can't hold back but Sutta, we ask you about Parikshit Maharaj, who is so amazing. His life, his, his birth, his life and his death are so amazing. Please come back to that topic. We have to hear about Parikshit Maharaj. And more or less, the rest of the first canto, to a large extent, is devoted to that description of Parikshit Maharaj. So this is, uh, we can appreciate like that. And like I said, this is my thesis statement that Parikshit Maharaj is Mahascharya. Everything about him is awesome and amazing. 
and instructive and nectarian and beautiful. And we can remember that a little bit as we hear these upcoming verses and upcoming chapters. Uh, finally, one last thing, or one final sort of point. Uh, many times in the Bhagavatam, throughout all the cantos of the Bhagavatam, Parikshit Maharaj is often referred to by the name Vishnu Rata, one who is protected by Lord Vishnu. And uh, it was interesting in my study for this verse, I also found uh, either I hadn't read it before, or I hadn't noticed it before, but Sutta Goswami also has a name that is several times given to him that he's given the name, known by the name Brahma Rata, one who is protected by the Supreme Absolute Truth. So um, Parikshit Maharaj is Vishnu Rata, he's protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Shukadeva Goswami is also protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, he's known by this name, Brahma Rata, Vishnu Rata and Brahma Rata, both protected by the Supreme Absolute Truth. In one purport, Srila Prabhupada says this, that Shukadeva Goswami is known as Brahma Rata, one who is directly protected by Krishna. And in parentheses, he has Vide uh, Brahma Vaivarta Purana. Sita Brahma Vaivarta Prana for whatever the story is of Shukadeva Goswami being protected. And I did some research and uh, I could not find a story in the Brahma Vaivarta Purana about that through my uh, meager, you know, quick research. I couldn't find that. So I'm guessing that uh, Srila Prabhupada is referring to how Krishna protected Shukadeva Goswami while still in the womb. He describes this several times. There's a purport in the ninth canto where he describes at some length that Shukadeva Goswami was present within the womb of his mother. And he was already from his very conception, he was fully Brahman realized and fully detached from all material life, even as a, in the womb. In fact, he was so detached from material life that he refused to leave the womb of his mother because he thought what's the use coming out of the womb and engaging in these mundane activities with these mundane people and mundane responsibilities what's the use just entanglement so for 12 years he remained within the womb of his mother you know how we can't understand this materially how this happened but this is the history that he simply remained within his womb of his mother for 12 years. And you can understand the distress caused to his mother, the distress caused to his father, Srila Vyasadev. And Srila Vyasadev spoke to his son, please come out, your Brahmin realize you won't be affected by the uh, entanglements of material life. But Shukadev Goswami didn't quite believe his father because his father was a Householder, well, whatever great sage he may have been, but Shukadeva Goswami thinks he's a householder. What is he? He's, he's entangled himself. How can he assure me that I won't be become entangled? So he refused to come out of the womb of his mother. So Vyasadeva himself personally traveled to Dwaraka and he spoke to Krishna himself and explained the whole situation to him. And Krishna himself went to the ashram of Vyasadeva with Vyasadeva. And personally, Krishna himself spoke to Shukadeva in the womb and said, I assure you, you will not be entangled by material life. I will protect you from material life. You don't have to fear, come out. And when Shukadeva Goswami got that assurance, that protection from Krishna, that you won't be entangled in material life, then he came out of the womb of his mother. And we've also heard the story how he came out of the womb. This when we were discussing back in whatever was chapter, maybe five or six, how Shukadeva Goswami came out of the womb and he immediately left home. He didn't stick around. He just walked naked. He was uh, all grown up. Prabhupada said his body was fully developed and he just walked away from the ashram. And his father was calling after him, calling after his son. And the only response he got was the echo of the trees. So uh, Shukadeva Goswami, like Maharaj Pariksit, was protected in the womb by Krishna. 
I even in my mind, I'm, you know, this is my own creation. I'm imagining, you know, Shukadev and uh, Parikshit meeting. And one of them says, you know, I was protected in the womb personally by Krishna. And the other one says, yeah, me too. So this is a, not the only reason, or even, I don't know how much of a reason that Parikshit and Shukadev were so uh, simpatico, so uh, understanding of each other's mood of surrendered and so able to communicate so deeply and so effectively the Srimad Bhagavatam with the questions and answers and comments back and forth are so amazing because these both persons were personally protected in the womb and throughout their lives personally protected by Krishna. And in another pur purport, pre excuse me, I'm stumbling over words here. In another purport, Srila Prabhupada says that Parikshit Maharaj is Vishnu Rata and Shukadev Goswami is Brahma Rata. So this is the proper uh, hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam, that the Vishnu Rata hears from the Brahma Rata, not from any ordinary person or any uh, mundane person or any cheating person, but the Vishnu Rata hears from the Brahma Rata. So this is how to understand how to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And we learn this from Parikshit Maharaj, that he was Vishnu Rata and he was waiting to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from the Brahma Rata. So we should also hear Srimad Bhagavatam and that way we read Srila Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam. If we're given the gift of giving a class on Srimad Bhagavatam or speaking about Srimad Bhagavatam or any preaching, <coughs> we have to represent that Brahma Rata, Shukadev, and that other Brahma Rata, Srila uh, Prabhupada. And we have to ourselves become Brahma Rata, protected by Krishna, under Krishna's protection, if we want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam properly, if we want to preach Srimad Bhagavatam properly. Uh, what's that? Mahatmanas tumam parta daivim prakritam ashrita. That Mahatmas, Mahatma is not a political title. It's not an academic title. It's not an official title that, oh, you become a Mahatma by this or that. But you become a hot Mahatma, Mahatmanas tumam parta daivim prakritam ashrita. When you're under the protection of Krishna's spiritual energy, when you're under the protection of Krishna's energy, when you're protected by Krishna, that means you're a Mahatma. That means you're Vishnu Rata. That means you're Brahma Rata. You're protected by Krishna. That's how you become qualified to understand and to speak Srimad Bhagavatam. So studying the life of Parikshit Maharaj, we learn that and we see the practical example of that. So that's basically what I wanted to say. We have lots of verses and lots of chapters about Parikshit Maharaj coming up and we want to hear that and relish that and understand it in that way. So that we can, you know, Krishna may not have personally come and protected us in the womb. Although the, just the fact that we're here right now and alive means that Krishna protected us. Because not every uh, conception in the womb makes it this far. So just the fact that we're here now means Krishna protected us. And just the fact that in our lives we had the uh, opportunity through Krishna through Srila Prabhupada, through Srila Prabhupada's devotees, we got the opportunity to come in contact with Krishna consciousness. That means Krishna protected us. And we're still here today, uh, happily or struggling or whatever the case may be, but still tied to Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON and tied to this process of Krishna consciousness. That means Krishna is protecting us. And more and more, Dive in Prakritam Ashrita more and more. We take shelter of Krishna's internal energy, not his external energy. Then we become more and more Mahatma, more and more Brahma Rata, protected by Krishna, and more and more qualified to understand and to explain and appreciate Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Parikshit Maharaj. Is there any questions or comments or discussion on this?
<coughs> Thank you, Prabhuji, for a wonderful session. Was really wonderful. So if there is any question or comment or any kind of you know, like comments, please go ahead. You can raise the hand or you can admit and you can go ahead. So Bindavali Mataji is here in hand. Please go ahead. Thank Mata. you very much, Prabhu, for a nice, nice class. And today's my or is when Parishit Maharaj was protected in the womb when so, um, Subhadra, and no, when he did that, he put that snake on his uh, Mahesh's <clears throat> neck, but at the second fraction of a second, he forgot that Krishna's protection he didn't ask. So that is a big lesson for me. Hmm. And all day, think about Krishna all day and chanting and uh, pray, um, doing, uh, hearing his katas and everything. That needs to protect us. That's yes. all. Yeah, that's that, a nice lesson. Actually, you could from that pass on, we could learn so many things, but that's a nice thing. That's a that, very nice that lesson. If you're not careful for a moment, yeah. you could make a mistake that can have serious consequences. That's a nice point. And also, we can also, with these great devotees who perform questionable acts, there's always the question, well, or like, like Prabhupada talks about Arjuna's ignorance in the Bhagavad Gita. And sometimes he says Arjuna was ignorant, and sometimes he said it was the pastime of the Lord. So whichever way we understand it, there's so many lessons to be drawn from it. But that's a very nice point. Thank you. Like, Mahatma. like you said, Prabhu, you, you you are saying about that giving the class and doing all this and because Krishna's mercy, we were also merciful that listening to this Bhagavatam every day, mm -hmm. and it, it, there's a lot of things to you know and. About Parishit Maharaj, you know, it was really like you're saying, his birth and uh, his, uh, until his death, all those things were a very, very big uh, lesson and very big information we have. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, just because you reminded me, I wanted to say that about his birth, look at Parishit Maharaj's family, his father, Abhimanyu. Uh, how amazing was Abhimanyu? We know his story from Mahabharat. And who is Abhimanyu? He's the son of Arjuna and Krishna's sister. Arjuna and Krishna's sister. Right? Had Abhimanyu and, and the son of Abhimanyu is Parikshit. So what kind of family lineage that his, uh, you know, his, what would that be? His grandmother or great grandmother was Krishna's sister. So his great uncle is Krishna himself. What kind of family is that? On then the other side, Uttara is the daughter of, of Virat. Virat was also what an amazing person. Actually, his whole, it's too much to get into now, but his evolution as a person is quite uh, interesting and fun. But again, an amazing family uh, who protected the Pandavas when they were living incognito and who helped fight in the uh, battle of Kurukshetra. So what an amazing, so much amazing about it. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Yes, Jonah Prabhu. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Acharya Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank, you for, th thank you for a very nice class. Uh, I wanted to ask, do, do we know how old Parikshit was when this took place? Hmm. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know personally. Okay. Uh, there might be some way of figuring out, calculating it, you know, how, you know, when everything happened, of deducing his age, but I don't know how long Prithimaj's life was and all of that. I get the impression that he was kind of at the, I don't know, the, the, the height of his, of, his, of his life, kind of like the, you know, he was the emperor of the world. He was, he wasn't like on the downswing of his life. I, I, and that's just the impression I get. It could yes. be, it yeah. could be wrong. I, I also, I also think that that makes sense that it wasn't like he was at the end of his life and ready to renounce anyway. Right. It seemed like and I guess know, in his full potency, his full glory when that happened. But I don't know that for sure or what the exact timeline is. Right. Right. And I guess the reason I ask is because it seems um, in many ways this, uh, you know, his, 
his occupation was 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 his service. You know, a lot of, like a lot of for us, a lot of times we go to work, whatever we give the fruits of our labor, mm. you know, to, to 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 Krishna. But for him, as the emperor of the world, he was he was setting the example for the world. I mean, he had a very important. You could say his, that was his service to to God. Um, and you'd wonder that uh, obviously the benefit of him doing. Uh, you know, accepting the curse, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, the rest of the world, you know, forever that have benefited from, from that. But you would think that because in one sense, he abandoned his, he, could we say that he kind of left his service um, to, um, and he could have maybe, I don't know, tried to counteract it. I'm just trying to put it together yeah. as far as like a, uh, you know, we, we hear in one terms, you know, you, you know, we should be, you know, focused on our service and who we're serving and not necessarily give it up for convenience or for, for other reasons, even when, even if it's inconvenient for us. Right. Um, and I don't think he falls into that category, but I just wonder, because of his service was so important for society and what could happen, um, you know, if he wasn't there, uh, it just seems... Uh, I don't know. It just comes to mind that. Yeah, no, that's a that's a really uh, super interesting point and important question. You know, and I don't I don't have an answer to it per se, but just that it takes some intelligence and some introspection to try to understand what is Krishna's will when the time for engagement. There's a time for engagement and there's a time for enunciation. The, uh, of course, the Varnashram system really rigidly chalks that out, but we don't have that exactly now. So we have to, you know, know in our heart what's best for us, what's best for society. When's the time for very active service? When's the time for renunciation, which is also a service? And even at renunciation, in that, re in that renunciation of Parikshit, he didn't do nothing. He also continued contributing in the seven days he had left. And he just, un you know, he understood better than I do, uh, perhaps better than you do, perhaps better than most of us knew what was actually Krishna's plan. We can't always know that. We have to, you know, suss it out the best we can by our own intelligence, by consultation with others, by practical results that there's a time for engagement, there's a, there's a time for disengagement. Uh, I'll tell a funny story. I think I must have told this story before because it's such a favorite of mine that long, long ago I was in Vrindavan and uh, someone was giving class. And in the course of dis discussion at the end of the class, His Holiness Jayadweta Maharaj uh, was asking something, speaking something. And he said that I'm, I'm, uh, designing a class for the VIHE, and the title of the class is "How to Break Relationships." So, if you know Jay, if you know Jay mm -hmm. Swami, he's very strong on this point of renunciation and giving up, giving up things. So he said, "I'm making a class how to break relationships," and another devotee, I think it was Yadubar Prabhu, uh, rose his hand and said, "Well, instead of breaking relationships, shouldn't we?" Uh, instead be studying and preparing how to make healthy relationships, how to make our relationships spiritual, how to make our relationships productive. And Jaidwe Jamaji sort of goes like that, like he's thinking. And he said, mm -hmm. I think I'll keep the name of my course. <laughs> so we have devotees who are very good at and preaching about engaging positive engagement and relationships and family and service and active service. And we also have devotees who are preaching renunciation. Prabhupada preached both of those. One time he said, because you are a nonsense, you do all your nonsense up to the age of 50. Then at the age of 50 though, what's that pancha sordam vanam rajet? At the age of 50, all the nonsense has to be given up. So again, that's getting back to Varnashram considerations, but both are there, positive engagement and, <clears throat> and sometimes accepting the uh, will of the Lord and, and giving up certain engagements. 
engagements can never be given up entirely. So even when you give up those engagements, you give up being a king, but then you take up the engagement of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam exclusively. And there may be analogies or parallels in our own life. Uh, that was a lot of rambling that I'm not sure it really, I'm not sure what I actually contributed to the discussion, but uh, but I'll just uh, say that, yes, John Rajari, that's an important point to consider. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Yes, Thank Mother you. I like, that. I like that about you, Great That was, uh, that was funny. Uh, yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Mata. Lots of uh, points as, as, you, as usual for us to be thinking about uh, introspection, especially. Um, the one thing that caught my attention today is that we should be so grateful uh, that we are in this movement. I mean, mm. every day, you know, I'm just uh, amazed by my luck, uh, you know by the protection, as you put it today, and not just luck, but it is his protection. Uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, coming into this season of festivals, uh, Janmashtami, and then the uh, day after that, I thought I would remind everybody, I think the way to show our gratitude to uh, Srila Prabhupada would be to um, make an offering uh, for his Vyas Puja. Um, I don't know if it's already too late or uh, if we can do it, but uh, we should get with it. We have only two more weeks. Um, you know, I just thought I'd... Uh, yes, nice there. point. <laughs> but, I mean, as, as time goes on, I'm realizing it even more and more. Uh, you know, we, so many people here, some of us are fortunate enough that we have... Um, you know, that we, I don't know, I don't even want to say that we have taken it in. It is because of his mercy that we have, uh, that we have come to this realization. Yes. Um, so, um, so please think about, uh, you know, making an offering to Srila Prabhupada that way. Nice point. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sudevi. Yes. A couple of uh, one question and one comment. The comment in the same line about uh, Drona Prabhu's question. I, I probably uh, it's not correct, but I, I want to say it anyway. You know the six opulences of Krishna. Yes. The renunciation is one of the opulences, right? Yes. So I, I would think also for Parikshit Maharaj, you know, that's also on his opulence, which he has many of being a king, being famous, being so righteous. So his renunciation and his example, and like you said in the beginning of the class, uh, all this happened that led to the uh, recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam. And again, of course, it's all Krishna's plan, but I, I just thought that that was a really great that you know, everything he had, and you know, we get so attached to small, small things that's so useless but for him to just, okay, it's time to go. I think that's yeah. a very... You know, yeah, good example. That is nice. I also like uh, comparing it to Krishna's opulences, that Krishna has all the opulences, but sometimes he'll show one opulence. Sometimes he'll show another opulence Some in his, in his pastimes in Vrindavan and even between different avatars, sometimes one opulence or another will be manifested. So in a devotee's life also, sometimes different opulences will be uh, manifested sometimes You'll do big, big external things, and sometimes you may be in a more renounced, simple state, and that renunciation is also a big, big thing. That's nice. I like that. Hari Krishna. Another question I had. At, at one point in your class, were you reciting some kind of poem or something about Parikshit? Yes, that's a prayer from the Atarva Veda, glorifying Parikshit Maharaj. And who, who is the writing? Who, I've never heard I, that. Yes. Well, it, no, it's the Atarva Veda. Who reads? No one reads the Atarva Veda. I only found it because I was because I because I, you know, was researching and looking it up. I don't know who is speaking it, but it's a prayer glorifying Parikshit Maharaj from the Atarva Veda. No, it was beautiful. I was just yeah. never heard. It. So I was like, oh, what is this? Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. See you in a week. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, Prabhu. 
I I wanted to just had uh, some point noted, probably just wanted to have a comment on that. So very amazingly, you know, like uh, you uh, described about the Parikshit Maharaj, you know, life uh, was very, very amazing. Only not life, his death was also amazing. So that we have the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, yeah, so birth, birth was amazing. You told like uh, uh, Krishna protected him in the womb. So that's why his birth was amazing. His activity was amazing because of, you know, Kali entered because of, uh, you know, he has given room to enter by his permission. And uh, Bhagavatam was, you know, like uh, given, uh, recited by Sukadeva Goswami uh, for him only. So we are hearing those all things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Parikshit exam, uh, you know, meaning you told about Parikshit, that is examining. So that we are knowing, but reminding, reminding again and again, you know, we are also searching in the, you know, the Krishna, how we can get the Krishna also by the Guru and Gauranga, Marcia, Guru and Gauranga. Right. So that's, that was the really wonderful. So, yeah, Proji, so overall, you know, like, uh, can you give a little, uh, you know, uh, the difference between you talked about Parikshit Maharaj and Sukhadev Goswami? Both uh, were protected by Krishna. Uh, Parikshit Maharaj is the Vishnu Ratha and uh, Sukhadev Goswami is the Brahma Ratha. So Vishnu Ratha is uh, hearing Bhagavatam through the Brahma Ratha. Mm. So Brahma, Brahma is related to what Brahmaji or uh, what is the meaning? Brahma is related to him personally. Uh, uh, the, the, well, the, like Primarily, you know, effulgence of the Lord. So in that way, Vishnu is the, you know, like uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, after that, uh, you know, like uh, uh, effulgence, Brahma, there is the Paramatma, then Bhagwan. Vishnu is the Bhagwan realization on that way he is having full flesh so he is listening from brahma so i was little you no know, uh, I, I wanted clarification if you can put into that Arik. yeah i i don't know exactly Prabhupada said that brahma about shukadev goswami he's, he says in the purport that brahma rata means he was protected by krishna so brahma uh, and also like i said i couldn't find the story in the brahma vivarta purana that Prabhupada says talks about that so i couldn't research the origin of that but i just took brahma to mean the supreme absolute truth and you know shukadeva swami he was originally absorbed in brahman so maybe it refers to that or maybe it just means brahma means the greatest the supreme absolute truth para brahman krishna so i'm not sure exactly the reference of the name just like uh um Parikshit is Vishnu Rata, but he wasn't really Vishnu Rata. He was really Krishna Rata, that Krishna yeah. came. But still, he's given the name Vishnu Rata. So, yes. so I take it the same way for Shukadev, that he's, it was Krishna himself who came from Dwaraka and assured him. But still, the name Brahma Rata is there. That Brahma means the greatest. So ultimately, it refers to Krishna. That's how, that's how I took it. But like I said, I couldn't find the original Puranic story about it, so I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, sure. For this, this much also helps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, like uh, maybe because of the, these are the one of the name or out of you know whatever the qualities they had. So yeah. So by that, uh, you know, like uh, later on, as we know that, that uh, Sukadeva Goswami uh, was you know uh, totally knowing about the Lord. So he based upon that, he was just, initially he was having the impression of, of like uh, the Brahma, Brahma kind of, you know, like uh, he was not uh, attracted with the Lord Vishnu until uh, he heard about uh, uh, the glorification of Lord Vishnu when Vyasadev had told everything to him. So maybe that is one of the reasons. Uh, Thank you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, that was, I think, yeah. Uh, what was that? Baraha Pidam Natavar Bapu Karne or Karni Karam. I think, yeah, that was the Sukadeva Goswami told him, right? So, yeah. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, thank you. Wonderful session.
Okay, it's late, it's after nine. Unless there's any other questions or comments, we could have announcements. If there's any announcements. Sunday feast this evening. Um, we're gonna continue the Sri Issue Punishout um, series. And tonight's class will be given by Acharya Prabhu. So we get to hear him twice today. But you should but you, but you should show up anyway. <laughs> This will make us show up. Um, <laughs> it was very, very, very nice, uh, very nice class, and I uh, certainly look forward to hearing from you again this evening. All right, sure. uh, starts at four thirty. Please come for the uh, for the kirtan at four thirty. Uh, right, yeah. Thank you very much. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada. Vancha Kalpa Thru Bias Chak, the Sindhu Vaya Chak, the Dita Nam Bhavane Bio, Bhavane Bio, Namo Namaha. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Everyone have a great day.